Hey, this is Greg, and this is Wild Edible and Herbal Plants number 37. Today we're going to be talking about a plant that I would almost be willing to bet you you've never heard anybody talking about any benefits from it. In fact, most of the time if you look up this plant, all you see is how to kill it or how to get rid of it. Today we're going to be talking about Johnson grass. But before we do that, we've got to do the disclaimer. A lot of things out there good to eat, good for you, taste great. A lot of others, they don't. Some can make you very sick and some can even kill you. So if you're not 100% certain what a plant is, don't eat it until after you've consulted with a local expert. So let's talk about Johnson grass. Now I've got a little patch here. They're actually spread all throughout this field, which you're going to see this field again in a couple of other videos. But Johnson grass is an invasive species that was uh, first in the Mediterranean. It has been naturalized in every continent in the world except for Antarctica and is found on every large landmass except for some of the Lesser Antilles. It's in every state in the United States, including Hawaii and Alaska, and it's in every province of Canada. So odds are really big that this one's going to be around you. Now, it just grows wild. It's a grass. These are... I don't know, four and a half foot tall. They can get up to nine foot tall. The Latin name is Sargrum halipens. Now, what that does mean is, yes, indeed, it is related to sargum. Now, you can see that the blades actually look a lot like little bitty corn blades. You can see that the stalks are very straight they're tubular a lot like um, a lot like a uh, bamboo because they grow in segments each day now as you go up you see these seeds get it focused in there all right now the reason that I actually chose this particular spot is we have a perfect example here you see how dark these seeds are that is normally indicative of a mold which can make these seeds toxic. So the edible part is indeed the seeds. And these are just getting close. You see how they're beginning to turn like a reddish color. Just lightly. Now when I was a kid I had chewed on many, many a Johnson grass stalk. But there's certain times of the year that you can't eat any part of this plant. Anytime that there's rapid growth, or if it has been fertilized, it actually will create cyanide inside its stalk. So you don't want to eat it whenever there's a rapid growth spurt. The important part of this thing is the seed. See how it just strips off there real nicely? Now it's got a lot of chaff. It can be eaten raw, but it's not very palatable raw because, like I said, it's got a lot of heavy fiber the outside of it. It can be dried and used whole like a millet, or it can be dried and, and ground into a flour, especially for, you know, to stretch your pa pa flour length. It takes quite a bit to get the, uh, the chaff off of it. Um, it's like a raw grain and uh, you know I'm eating it with chaff and all so it can get stuck in your teeth but it is good to know for that now it makes a medium low quality hay for cows horses will not eat it you can collect all these seed pods and dry them and use them as a mix in your chicken feed. It's got a decent protein rating. It's got a good fat rate. Um, it does have a few micronutrients. It's got some calcium and things like that. Um, it is invasive. So, like I said, most people are trying to figure out how to kill it, not how to actually use it. It does have uh, diuretic tendencies. Increases urine flow. So, it's not a real heavy hitter on the medicinal front. But if things go to pot... You want to make your flower last a heck of a lot longer. This stuff grows everywhere. Might be good to know. 
Well, there you have it. Step by step, we're bringing the rule back. Bye-bye.